How is it going everybody? You're watching Then About Tech, so you've just got a new iPhone. How amazing is that? But did you know that there are some very important settings and changes that you have to make right now? That's right, in this video I'm going to show you what you need to do right after you get your new iPhone. Let's get started. I always like to begin right here at the control center, which you can easily access by pulling down at the top right hand corner of our iPhone. Think of it like a full page full of shortcuts, buttons and controls that will help you so much on your day to day use on your iPhone. You're going to use this every day all day and the way it's laid out right here is very good already you have your connections here at the top of course you have media do not disturb so your focus modes you have here brightness volume you can put it in silent mode and so on like flashlight and camera but still that's not enough if you want to add the best controls you actually have to tap and hold anywhere right here on this blank area and then add a control think of it like a shortcut button okay and the first one is definitely low power mode so when your iphone is low on battery tap on it it's gonna save a ton of your battery add another control i also love screen recording so then if you want to record what's going on on your screen and create a video out of it screen recording is the option for you at a control let's go ahead and take a look at dark mode super cool because you can switch between light and dark mode and change the theme of your iphone make it full light or full dark super cool add another control and then a voice memo so then if you are in a meeting in a class or talking to someone and you want to record what's going on tap here it's going to start recording instantly and then last but not least if we add a control and scroll pretty much all the way down and keep in mind uh, I, I do recommend that you take a look at this individually because, of course, this is really uh, up to the taste of the user, okay? There may be a ton of controls here that are good for you, but not really that relevant to me. And the last one is the ping my watch. So then if you have an Apple Watch and you don't know where it is, you tap on it and you can easily find it super cool. So the way it is right now, in my opinion, you're going to have the best options. Of course, those are all first party native Apple controls. Of course, uh, when you start installing more and more of your apps, you can get controls for your apps as well. Now let's jump into our settings and then scroll a bit down until we get here to display and brightness, tap on it, and then scroll down just a bit until we get here to auto lock, tap on it, and by default, auto lock is set to 30 seconds. So then when your iPhone is inactive, so if you're holding it and not doing anything, for example, in 30 seconds, the screen will go dark. And as a matter of fact, in just a few seconds, it will already dim. So this is very annoying because it's super fast and then your screen is dimming and then you're not seeing what's going on on the screen. I really hate this. My recommendation is for you to use either five minutes or never, of course. This will depend a lot on how you use your iPhone and how much attention you pay to your iPhone because some people really do leave their iPhone somewhere and go to another room and then forget they're there. So then if you leave it at never, it will of course drain your battery. But if you really pay attention to your phone, there's no problem leaving on never. But of course you can leave on five minutes as well. So then your iPhone won't be constantly dimming and locking automatically super fast like 30 seconds seconds, which is the default. Let's come back here and then back once again to the very first page of our settings and scroll all the way up because now we have to talk about battery, of course. And here we have to talk about charging more specifically. So right here we have two options, charge limit and optimize battery charging. Keep in mind that you only have those two options if you have an iPhone 15 or newer. If you have an iPhone 14 or older, you just have the optimized battery charging, okay? So let's start with the first feature, charge limit. My recommendation is for you to go ahead and slide all the way down and leave it at 80%. What this will do, as the name suggests, is it'll limit your battery charging to 80%. So you plug it in, it'll start charging. Once it reaches 80%, it'll stop. It won't charge past that. And this is very, very good for battery health. 
for a battery lifespan in the long run, okay? So I do recommend that you leave it like that. There are a ton of videos of me talking about this on the channel, so I'm not gonna give you the full explanation on why this is good for a battery. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave a card right here, link in the description, you can go ahead, check it out, okay? Now, if you don't have this feature, so let's go back here to 100%, and then set to 100%. Now you can use, of course, the optimized battery charging. This is available on every single iPhone there is. And it'll do kind of the same thing. It'll limit the charge to 80% as well, but only when you're charging your phone overnight. So then when you plug it in, it'll stick there, it'll stay there at 80%, and then only when you are about to wake up and your iPhone knows your habits, then it'll go ahead and charge to 100. So. It's better than nothing, but of course, not as good as the charge limit, but this will help you a lot as well in the long run in your battery health. Let's come back once again here to the very first page and then scroll down until we get to general and then scroll a bit down until we get to keyboard and we have to talk about this. First, let's talk about keyboards right there at the top. My recommendation is go ahead and add every single language that you talk or write or type or you access in any way. That's why I have here a few languages. Also, go ahead and add your emoji keyboard. As you can see, you can simply add languages and emoji by simply tapping on add new keyboard, scroll down and then tap here on it. This is very, very important because you can easily cycle through your favorite languages and your emoji keyboard, which is of course very, very, very important, okay? On top of that, you can use a bilingual keyboard, so you can have just one keyboard with two languages. This is very cool as well, and I do really like this feature. And if we come back once again, we have here the all keyboards menu. And my recommendation is take a look at this and see if you want all of that. In my opinion, check spelling can get annoying sometimes. So you know when you're typing something and then the iPhone is correcting what you're typing. Yeah, this can get annoying, especially if you like to use a lot of slangs, if you like to use a lot of contraptions and if you don't wanna write perfectly every single time. So check spelling can be annoying so you can deactivate it and then your iPhone won't correct you, but you can leave predictive, for example, so then it is suggest new words to you. It is suggest the words it thinks you wanna write, but without correcting. So this is very, very good, okay? And of course you have here punctuation, math results and a lot of other stuff. Coming back once again here to the very first page of our settings. Now let's talk about backup. So right here at the top, you have your Apple account. Tap on it and then tap on iCloud and then tap on iCloud keyboard. In my opinion, the iCloud keyboard is just the best way to backup your iPhone. Simply because you don't need to plug it into anything. It's automatic. It's super simple. All you have to do is enable it and then your iPhone will be backed up automatically pretty much every day or every other day. I love this feature. The only problem with it is it's paid. You won't be able to back up your iPhone for free. You will have to be an iCloud Plus subscriber and pay for more storage as I'm paying right here, which I'm almost running out by the way. So that's the only advantage. So if you don't want to back up your iPhone to the cloud because you don't want to pay or something like that, you can also back it up to a computer. So you can plug it into a computer and back it up to your Mac or your PC and that's completely free. The only thing I wanna make sure that you understand in this video, if you are a new iPhone user especially, is you have to back up your iPhone. If it is iCloud, if it is computer, it doesn't matter, but it's super, super important. A backup is a security copy with everything that's on your iPhone. So then if you lose your iPhone, if somebody steals it, if it breaks, you won't lose any of your data because you have your backup and you can recover it later. If you wanna learn more about your backups in detail, including a step-by-step -step on how to backup to a computer, Mac or PC, I'll leave a card right here, link in the description, so you can go ahead and check it out. Let's come back once again to the very first page of our settings, so another time. And then if we scroll down all the way pretty much until face ID and passcode, and then right here, you're gonna type in your lock screen passcode, then scroll all the way down until you get to stolen device protection. This is pretty much probably the most important security feature 
Apple has ever created for the iPhone. So make sure to allow it, to enable it, and also to tap on this option away from familiar locations. Let me briefly explain you what is stolen device protection. So when this feature is enabled, every time you wanna change any very important setting on your iPhone, like changing your passcode, changing your Apple ID password, changing your Apple ID email, anything related to your account or financial, on, of course, your iPhone, right here, when stolen device protection is enabled, it'll actually ask you for Face ID to make sure it's you. And not only that, it'll actually give you a countdown, a delay of one hour before you're actually able to make the change. And this is very, very important because if somebody steals your iPhone or if you lose it somewhere, especially if it is unlocked like that, before, any thief or any person with bad intentions would be able to change pretty much anything on your iPhone. Now, with this feature, they can't because there's Face ID and then they have to wait an hour for they to actually be able to change what they want to change. And this, of course, this delay is so you have time to actually contact Apple, contact your bank accounts and so on and block everything. So this is very, very cool. And the away from familiar locations setting option is important because when you are in a familiar location like your house, your office, work, school, college, or something like that, this delay won't happen. So you won't have to wait because Apple understands that you're actually somewhere safe. So it's the best way to use this feature. But of course, if you live, if you are in a very unsafe place, you can tap on always and then every single time it'll ask you for that one hour delay. The iPhone wouldn't be the iPhone without its camera, right? So if you come back here to our settings, scroll down and tap on camera, as you can see, there are dozens of options, settings, and if you tap on each one of those, there are other dozens of settings and options that you can actually change. You have no idea how much stuff you can change to make your camera even better than it already is out of the box. So if you wanna go ahead and make your iPhone camera perfect for photos and videos and get the best results possible for your iPhone camera, I do recommend that you take a look at this card right here, link in the description, where I teach you step by step, option by option, setting by setting, the best camera settings for your iPhone. This is pretty long, so I don't wanna bring you to this video, but go ahead and check it out. And last but not least, if we come back once again to our settings for the very final time, of course, we have to talk about, let's scroll down, we have to talk about Wallet and Apple Pay. I always do recommend that when you get a new iPhone, you go ahead and enable and set up and add all your cards. So you can go ahead, double press here on the side, and then pay for stuff. Of course, you can also use uh, if your car is compatible with the technology and you can save your car key here, you can use your iPhone to open your car and run it. And of course, more and more features are here and to come. Like for example, you can save uh, keys so you can open up doors for hotels. Uh, you can even add to open up your own house door so you can add keys, not only credit cards, but also keys so you don't have to carry anything physical anymore, like a key, a card, or anything like that. So it's very easy to actually add a card or a key here. So you can tap here on add card and then manually add the information like name, expiration date, security code, and so on. And same goes for other kind of keys, like for example, uh, your car keys, as I mentioned before. Uh, so you can either add them straight here from the settings or you can open their dedicated apps. So banking apps or your car app or maybe your hotel app. And then of course add, and I think this is super, super important and useful because you can make your iPhone your only to go device. You don't have to carry around wallets and keychains and things like that, all right? So that's pretty much it. Those are some of the most important settings and changes that I always recommend you to do when you get a brand new iPhone. And as a matter of fact, I know a lot of people that have iPhones for a long, long time that didn't know at least one or two of those things. So that's cool as well. Also, please let me know in the comments down below if you'd like me to make a part two of this video, because as I said, those are some of the most important. There are so many important settings on the iPhone. And if you like this video and you wanna see a part two, make sure to leave it down below. And of course, 
we'll record it and give it to you. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next videos with you guys. Bye bye.